1990s animated X-Men show, Season 4, Episode 8. Thoughts? This episode is called Nightcrawler. There will be more, you know, I'm, I'm going to do another video where I do two, probably right after this. So, by the time this video is up, that might also already be up. So, before I get into it, the top link in the description box allows you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. It's extremely important strike. And then there are a number of links to videos that explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. And, yeah, I will start by saying... I do have some issues with some of the pro-Christian stuff in this episode, but my anti-theist days are long behind me. I am not going to spend forever ranting about it. And I do love the rest of the episode. And I do really appreciate, you know... Of course, the, the it's, a, it's a kid show, it's American, of course it's going to be in favor of Christianity, you know, and, and have characters say things like, oh, you know... Every what was it? All people believe God loves them, which is just fundamentally one hundred percent untrue. Okay, had a little bit of anti-theism left in me, but ultimately the episode does actually say Christians are capable of doing evil. You know, every single character in this episode who does something wrong is a Christian. You know, at least one of them is even a monk. So. I do appreciate that, and I, I really like when, I guess it is, I think it is Monk, Brother Reinhardt, who says, God is with us as he is doing evil. And that's a very potent message, and sadly very true. A lot of the worst things in the world have been done by people who were convinced that God was on their side. So quite appreciate that and I really I, I I quite like you know the the opening literally does have this torch wheeling mob and you know they actually do give Nightcrawler this kind of scary introduction he's he comes across as a monster you know with <clears throat> some of the earliest shots you just see the the glowing yellow eyes in the darkness and He's like crawling on this church and he disappears into thin air, you know, all these things. So, you know, you really do see how, you know, why people fear him. And the, the yeah, the, the opening uses his powers really well, his acrobatics, his teleportation. And yeah, if, this is a really good way to, you know, do Nightcrawler. Like, it's, I believe the circus stuff is close to the, the comic, and certainly he wouldn't be the only comic book character that, like, fits in well in a circus. Uh, there was, you know, the Incredible Hulk was in a circus temporarily because, you know, a little bit of makeup and you can accept him as, you know, yeah, a member of a, a circus, uh, yeah. The ski accident was a bit of forced tension, though I do appreciate it does at least have a story point. You know, this thing of, the, you know, for one thing they had to get, you know, the the three X-Men to the, ah, uh, what's it called? The um, monastery. They had to, sub, you know, Gambit had to be, you know, knocked out so that Reinhardt could attack him for being a mutant. Uh, let's see, um, yeah, you know, so that, because, because that was, yeah, you know, the, 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 um, it was necessary for the story that they wanted to tell, and I do think that was a good choice, but, you know, a ski accident, that's no laughing matter, they could have lost half a day of skiing, and, you know, the, the, <laughs> so, so, they were trying to treat Rogue, but even her bare arms, they never touched her? I don't know if that's 100%. Like, like I'm, you know, not, like, touch in a bad way, but I just mean, like, how, how, do you, how do you help someone who's been, like, knocked out and never touch their skin with your skin? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I, rubber gloves? 
Do they have those on a monastery? Anyway, yeah, you know, afterwards, you know, they point out, you know, okay, so Rogue is literally the only woman there. So, you know, dial down the boobies a little bit. And that does lead to an amusing bit of, you know, the, the continuity for clothes is not always the best on this show. You know, there's an... That, that episode where Beast is dealing with the, the previously blind woman, his his lab coat switches colors at one point, you know, the not a clothes thing, but an earlier episode, Beast had this device, you know, and, like, he has it in an early scene, and then later he actually invents the device, so, it's, you know, anyway, here, like, when they're, like, at the table, at first she is wearing just a, a monk's gown, is that what it's called? And then, like, when she stands up and says, okay, we got to deal with this, suddenly she's back to wearing, you know, she's got bare arms and the the skiing outfit. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, I did find it kind of, fun. like, it's so typical Gambit that he's, like, he's whining about Rogue's choice of vacation. And then Wolverine whines a little bit, Rogue storms off, and then Gambit's like, this is your fault to, to Wolverine. It's like, dude. You started this conflict, you know, you, you know, he was the one who started out whining, you know, and, and it is also, you know, Lindsay Ellis, in one of her videos on this show, also pointed out, why is, like, I mean, I guess for, for like, kid, you know, yeah, the thing she said was, why did they all go on this vacation, like, Rogue planned it, so she actually, you know, she thought this is going to be good for, for all, you know, all three of us. Why did the other two go if they didn't want to go? You know, and I think you know it's it's a kids show. Kids can relate to being forced to go to travel somewhere that they really don't want to go. So I think that might be what's going on. That it really because because it doesn't make sense. Like nobody's gonna force these uh, you know adults who are like. I mean, I guess if there was like a company retreat, but Xavier's not gonna force the people working for him to go on a vacation that they don't want to, you know, he might ask them to undertake a mission that they don't particularly want. But, like, <laughs> and I do appreciate it, it would have felt really incongruous if they did actually have, you know, I want you to go skiing. Like, it's just, no, no, that's not. But, but yeah, they had to get the three of them to Germany somehow because it really would feel weird if it was, like, like, you can, you can buy that, you know, for one thing, Nightcrawler is actually, you know, German, you know, so, so that's what, I, and I appreciate, you know, Kurt Wagner, and he got the last name Wagner from, you know, it was the Wagner Circus, you know, and we briefly see that Mystique is his real mother, you know, and, and he doesn't know this, and in this episode, the X-Men also don't learn, I feel like, is there a later episode where it's revealed? I, I feel like, anyway, we'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, the the you know you have to you have to do some legwork if you want to get Nightcrawler from his like origin out of Germany. You know, it's a it's a pretty significant. You know, sim similar to you know they explained why Colossus was suddenly in America. You know, and yeah, like I'm not you know. I suppose they could have done the story in, like, a small southern town, like a, yeah, they could, they could try that in a small town, but then you don't have this big majestic castle, and that would be a real loss. Like, seeing, seeing a mob storm, you know, a well, castle, you know, a monastery, you know, that's, with with you know thunder and lightning and just you know, you don't want to lose that that's too too cool to to just replace with uh, you know a, a southern church that's uh, yeah um I kind of like the implication that these monks literally all they do is take care of people who've been injured while skiing you know that's it's a living, I guess. Um, yeah, that is all I have to say for this one. But yeah, really, you know, 
good representation of Nightcrawler, both powers, uh, you know, powers, abilities, as well as personality. And they actually get his, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, some, not all stories that have acrobatic characters explain why they're acrobatic, you know, I, I, um, I have to admit, it's been forever since I read a comic that had Holly, Harley Quinn in it. I, I do quite like some of the Suicide, Suicide Squad books that have her in it. You know, the if you just watch the the movie, the, especially the 2016 movie, it's like, okay, I get why you're you're super smart, you know, educated psychiatrist. When did you learn all this ninja crap? Like, is this, you know, and and here it's like, no, he learned it from the circus. You know, he from from when he was an infant, he grew up in a circus. So you know, from he was. Like, they were teaching him to, to, like, walk and do somersaults at around the same time, you know. So, so yeah, by the time he's an adult, he can do this ridiculous acrobatic stuff. You know, that makes perfect sense. So, yeah. Let's see. And I can imagine this might have helped, you know, inspire his appearances in some of the live-action movies... Certainly this, you know, was he always, was he always this religious in the books? I, I don't, sir, uh, I, I feel like that was something that was at least eventually changed. Maybe it was in the 90s, I'm not entirely sure. But, yeah, you know, he is here, he is in X-Men 2. They don't really touch upon it in the, in the other, in the ones where he's younger. But but yeah, you know the the and right and I appreciate you know near near the end you know he could literally just let Reinhardt fall. It would be the easiest thing in the world, but he doesn't want to. Even all that Reinhardt has done, you know, he does have to you know deliver this really obnoxious you know judging is not for me. That's for God, you know, but. Nevertheless, you know, he didn't hurt this guy who was literally, like, firing a gun at him, you know, 30 seconds prior. And, yeah, you know, I, the, the episode does a really good job showing, you know, it is not Nightcrawler who is evil. Nightcrawler looks the way he does. He can't help that. It's people's reactions that are wrong, you know, people doing evil in reaction to his appearance. And, yeah, you know, I, I feel like that's an excellent, you know, like, at the time it was probably more meant as, like, in favor of, you know, civil rights for, for black people and such, but today it works incredibly well as a pro-trans message, you know, where it, a trans acceptance message, you know, just, you know, there have been recent violence, uh, hold on, I, I'm gonna find it real, real quick, there was a, let's see, Eric's Reloaded, excellent YouTuber, did a video, uh, was it that long ago, or am I on the wrong, He's got more than one channel. I guess maybe that's okay. Uh, let's see. So one of them is Eric's Reloaded. Is it Eric's Debunks? I'm a big fan of both channels. I just don't completely remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is from yesterday. A woman shot over Pride Flag. I mean, think about how insane that is. So, yeah. You know, because this episode, like a lot of the comics, don't say, you know, it's about gay people, it's about black people. They just say it's about an oppressed minority. You know, it's, yeah, the episode is still relevant. It's, you know, yeah. I am going to link his video in the description box. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's what I have for this episode, so yeah, gonna watch parts one and two of One Man's Worth, and get right back to you, so yeah, see you soon, make mine marvel.